Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for coming and joining me today. Uh, I do uh, want to acknowledge the trustees. I'm not sure who might be in the audience. I didn't see who was coming in, but uh, again, if you're here, thank you very much for coming. The State of the College presents an opportunity for all of us to reflect and celebrate the significant events and accomplishments that have happened this past year. Also to take into account our goals and aspirations for the future and to remind us all about the collective effort it takes from each and every one of us to make Green River uh, such a successful and great institution. I'd like to start today out with a personal uh, story and uh, I want everyone to know that in every time of stress there is a silver lining. And in this case it was the fact that my grandson had open heart surgery this past year. And he is the one over there with the baseball uh, bat in his hand. Um, today I'm happy to report that he is a healthy five-year-old who absolutely loves baseball and soccer, very involved, outside all the time, a typical boy. And as you can see, my grandchildren help me to balance my life. Uh, my granddaughter, Tatum, she's three, she's on the top. My oldest grandson is on the bottom, Kellen. He is six, going to be seven. And then Caden uh, is the one with the diploma. And he just graduated from preschool. And again, he's five. <laughs> so uh, again, you know, my, my, my grandchildren balance my life. Our lives are very, very busy at Green River. And I really do wish that each and every one of you find a balance in your life, whether it's grandchildren or family or reading, sailing, whatever that is. Make sure that you take the time to balance your life because we do live very busy lives at work and it's important that you do find that balance for, especially for health reasons, so, and plus enjoyment. So make sure that, that you do that. And I do want to thank everyone that has inquired about my grandson's health in the last uh, few months. So again, thank you very much for your, your concern. Here at Green River, it's been a year of growth, innovation, and student success. We continue to set the bar high on our commitment to be a vibrant and inclusive community. The work we do in support of diversity, equity, and inclusion contributes to the rich and dynamic global environment that adds value to our lives. Come on down. <laughs> The work that we do in support of diversity, equity, and inclusion is important to our campus environment and truly allows us an opportunity to reflect on and value our diverse communities. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge Michael Tuncap and the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion and the work that they are doing for the college to embrace, engage, and promote diversity on our campuses. The team has experienced significant growth this past year, and some of their accomplishments include working closely with Vic Bahal and GDEC, developing a year-long diversity leadership program uh, for students, staff, and faculty, organizing a Somali back-to-school day, which was instrumental in reaching out to our local Somali community, and then hosting a second annual People's First Conference which was welcomed by nearly 300 participants, both from the campus and external community. And then the last thing I'd like to focus on is coordinating an annual diversity equity conference, which nearly doubled since the participation in uh, 2013. These are merely a few of the highlights that are visible to us uh, that this team has worked so diligently on but it doesn't adequately re reflect all the work that has gone on behind the scenes. And so again, I'd like to acknowledge Michael Tuncap, are you here Michael? And his office. Anybody here from his office? Okay, stand up. Thank you for all your good work. Also, our veteran students are important to the college community. The veteran service team, under the direction of Tim Lovett, continues to create a truly supportive and dedicated environment for our veterans coming back. The progress that they made this year is remarkable and includes serving nearly 489 veterans, building a dedicated space to use as a resource center, and helping Green River students form an official chapter of Student Veterans of America. This is increasingly important as our veterans come back home. They need a home away from their home. 
and Green River can be that home. Both the diversity and veteran successes are excellent examples of student engagement, which is a direct result of increased staff capacity and support of these very important programs. This all leads to increased student retention, persistence, and achievement, which we're all striving to achieve. So I would like also to have Tim Levitt and his team stand up. Is there anybody here from the Veterans Office? If not, let them know that we're recognizing them. Our college continues to grow and change transformational, uh, transformationally in ways to a point that uh, I guess it provides a very bright and optimistic future for the college. When the college went through the accreditation review process about a year ago, one of the recommendations was to clarify our governance and uh, our system of governance. Shortly thereafter, we made the commitment to address this recommendation head on and began a process of developing a new college governance model. Vice President of Instruction, Dr. Derek Brandis, has championed this important initiative over the last five months. Again, including organizing multiple town hall meetings, collecting feedback, and then uh, creating a steering committee to move this project forward. The, uh, the result of his efforts and others uh, resulted in the approval of a participatory governance policy that was adopted by our Board of Trustees in May. The steering committee is working on the next phase of this process. What does that structure look like? Which is to operationalize the policy. So again, I highly encourage people, as many people as possible, to contact Dr. Brandes to participate in this process. That's what it's about. We want to hear more voices. So Derek, thank you very much for taking that project on. <laughs> the most visible growth to the college is our campus environment and the capital projects that are currently underway. And you don't have to look very far out the windows to see what's happening. Our main campus is no doubt one of the most beautiful and serene college campuses I've ever seen. We are incredibly fortunate to have such a wonderful place to work and a wonderful place for our students to go to school. Green River has placed a lot of emphasis in ensuring that our college is equipped with state-of-the-art facilities and cutting-edge technology that will help prepare our students for today's and tomorrow's future jobs. We are experiencing a remarkable growth, a period of growth with simultaneous, simultaneous projects going on at the same time. The new Student Life Center and the new Trades Complex will continue Green River's long tradition of building sustainable buildings, focusing on especially green technologies. In conjunction with our 50th anniversary in 2015, we will celebrate the opening of these two buildings, which will be shared and appreciated not only by our students, faculty and staff, but also our communities for years to come. And I would like to recognize all the hard work that Sam Ball does on our project. So Sam, thank you. We continue to invest in our branch campuses to support the needs of our diverse communities and the communities that we serve. With the purchase of 3.7 acres in North Auburn, our new Auburn project will be underway in the next few months. The building will provide much needed space, technology, and hands-on training for our aviation program, as well as our Small Business Development Center and our Washington Environmental Training Center. We are just running out of space. The design and the permits are expected in spring of 2015 with construction to begin in that summer. And then the building will be operational a year later in fall for classes to begin. When finished, the Auburn Center building will be three stories in height and an estimated 30,700 square feet. So again, that should help alleviate some of our space demands. Currently at the Kent campus, a student has the ability to complete a full AA degree with a variety of daytime courses offered there. Over the next couple years, the Kent campus staff will be working to make sure that this opportunity is also available in the evening. It doesn't do any good to have a building sitting there without being utilized. The Kent campus is also working on doubling the amount of daily morning classes for our Running Start students. 
Having a daily course for one hour allows the students from the high school to come down to the Kent campus, take a course, and then get back to their own high school and finish the day out at their uh, local high school. Beginning in fall 2014, the Kent IESL student population will double when the Kent campus takes on level three classes. This will nearly fill all the lecture classes at the Kent Center in the afternoon. We're, again, we're running out of space for those classes here. Also beginning next year, Kent will offer MBA courses in the evening through Brandon University. And this is a very exciting partnership, again, bringing students there for a different level of education. The continuing and community education staff is expanding their reach in contract training with the addition of Mike Nielsen, who is our new training and delivery manager. Bob and Mike, again, will be pursuing grants and contracts in addition to supervising instructors and coordinating classes. So again, the Kent, camp, uh, the Kent campus is going full speed. And would anybody from the Kent campus please stand up? Maybe they're, maybe they're streaming us. They're streaming. You're streaming us. Oh, hi, Kent campus. The Enum Claw campus continues to meet the needs in their community, especially for high school students who are seeking additional high school credit. The, flex uh, the flexibility of class scheduling has been working very well for the Enum Claw high school students, and that is because of a great relationship between Diane Anderson and Mike Nielsen, the, the superintendent of schools in Enum Claw. So again, it goes back to partnerships. The enrollment continues to hold steady, and we are looking at adding additional credit courses where appropriate to increase FTEs and provide more choices for AA degree attainment in Enumclaw. The Small Business Center is working closely with the city of Enumclaw and has been cited actually in the Enumclaw City's Economic Development Plan as a central strategy for increasing small businesses in Enumclaw. And I got that also firsthand from the mayor this past week. She loves that uh, small business center involvement in Enumclaw. We are seeing more than just the physical results of our commitment to growth. Innovative approaches to meeting the needs of our students, the economy, and the community are essential to our development. We are creating uh, additional opportunities for our students to explore new degrees. We implemented our first Bachelor's of Applied Science degree in Information Technology with a focus on network administration and security this past winter with a full cohort of 22 students. Very, very exciting and innovative. On May 8th, the State Board approved the application to add two additional BAS degrees. The first cohort for IT software development will begin this coming fall. And the Marketing and Entrepreneur BAS will be starting in winter of 2015. The demand for these BAS programs are rising. It's rising really rapidly. As a matter of fact, our own Devin Dupree was instrumental in working with two other individuals on a white paper that was presented at WAC this last month and also presented to the State Board, showcasing the high demand for these BAS degrees. What it's saying is even with the community colleges implementing BAS degrees and the four years continuing to offer their four-year degrees, there's not going to be enough to fit the demand that Washington State and the country is going to need. So Devin, thank you very much. Do you want to stand up? Both of uh, the demand for, again, as I mentioned, uh, the BASs are constantly increasing. We are continuing to pursue a BAS to include a natural resources degree in, uh, in partnership with Grace Harbor Community College. This is the first one in the system, so again, being very innovative and collaborative. Uh, and then we are also looking at an aeronautical science BAS degree. Both of these uh, programs were reviewed in phase one approval at the last state board meeting. And so again, with those individuals with the BAS programs, please stand up and be recognized. I don't know if we have any of the, yes, yes. <laughs> the other instructors are most probably very busy out there doing other things with students, I'm sure. Um, but again, we're looking at most probably one of the next BAS degrees. Uh, we're most probably focusing on nursing 
We also would like to possibly look at OT, PT in the future, and then possibly teaching. So again, the, the door's wide open for what we might do in the future. Growth and innovation is coming very soon in the form of CTC Link. Most all of you have heard about CTC Link and how it's going to Im impact our institution. Our implementation period, when we start working with the state board on this, is two months away. Not, you know, a year ago it sounded like forever, but right now it's right, right in front of us. And the level of project involvement across the campus is increasing. Sarah Postal and David Larson are working together as co-chairs uh, with the campus subject experts, uh, matter experts on preparatory processes. So I cannot stress enough about how much success this project is dependent on campus-wide involvement. So please continue to ask questions and then also attend meetings when you see them pop up, but your feedback is absolutely necessary. This last year, I had the opportunity to serve on the WAC Technology Committee and to witness firsthand the efforts that the pilot schools, of which were Tacoma and Spokane, went through, and they're still going through, and they will be going live in August of 2014. So again, it is possible. I know that we will be successful too, but it's going to take the efforts of everybody working together to get through this. And, and again, watching those pilot schools, Green River can do it. I know, I'm convinced we can do it together. So again, I would like to recognize David and Sarah. Would you please stand up? Thank you very much. I'd also like to recognize the chart on, on the screen here that gives you a little bit of an idea of the schedule and what we will be going through, but uh, a very busy process, but I'm convinced with my background in technology that things will be better on the other end. But change is never easy. And I want to reassure everybody that lots and lots of training opportunities are built into this process. So again, just flow with it and you will receive the support that you need to, to get through it and be successful. Access to innovation begins with obtaining the necessary financial support to make it happen. Green River is taking a steadfast approach to seek out and pursue grants to uh, support our innovative efforts. This is really a team effort by many different individuals across our campus, but also coordinated by Matt Swenson, our Director of Grants. The work they have done to date has paid off to the tune of nearly $4 million in grant funding this year. That's absolutely amazing. These, I don't, if anybody has been involved in those grant opportunities, and I don't know if Matt is here, but I was gonna recognize Matt. Matt, stand up, yes, stand up. Well, that was a halfway stand up, but that was good. <laughs> These grants will be used to advance information technology degree programs, increase post-secondary access, persistence, and completion for low-rate or uh, low-income students, transform and increase retention in our STEM education, and provide nearly a half million dollars in scholarships for low-income students over the next three years. We ought to be very, very proud of that effort. Dr. Chitcha Solomon, Green River Physics Instructor, constantly provides excellent cutting edge innovation in the classroom. Chitra, along with her colleague, Dr. Christine Lescombe from the University of Washington, received a $248,711 grant from the National Science Foundation in 2012. The grant is being utilized to incorporate authentic like research lab experiences in the upper level science classes. In the lab, students learn about information technology literacy, science information literacy, the, uh, the principles of research, including the formation of research questions, experimental design, and analysis. One of the research experiments involves solar cell development using blackberries and raspberries, which are my favorite, by the way. Another involves making solar cells with, or, uh, with organic molecules in an ink form that could literally be painted on household curtains to generate energy. Amazing, is this amazing? This kind of cutting edge innovation serves to keep our STEM students on track, engaged, and interested. 
thanks to the work of Chitra and the Green River Physics Department. So Chitra, I don't know if you're here. Yes, please stand up. Anybody in the physics? Thank you so much. That is amazing. I will remember that the next time I eat, I eat raspberries, OK? I don't know whether I'll start to glow or what, but <laughs> very exciting, very exciting. The Green River Foundation is under the direction of George Frazier and the Development Office staff, and they continue to set pace for investing in student success. Their innovative approach to fundraising and community partnerships is making a difference in the lives of our students on a daily basis, as well as the growth of the college. For the past year, the foundation awarded over $400,000 to fund 285 scholarships to students at Green River. This is a 23% increase over the year before. The level of success would not be possible, though, without the support of the hundreds of employees who donate each year through the foundation. Your employee contributions help fund scholarships and much more, so thank you everyone for your ongoing contributions to the foundation. Beyond scholarships, our students sometimes need emergency support. The two very important funds uh, that contribute to real assistance to students are the VET Fund and the SAFE Fund. The VET Fund continues to grow in community support and has helped many students not only stay enrolled, but to also stay on track. But they, it has also allowed vets to help manage their personal commitments, like housing and utilities, to keep their families safe. Nearly $10,000 has been put to use this year supporting our vets, which is just makes me proud. The SAFE Fund is also administered by Christine McMillan through Student Affairs and provides one-time support uh, for students who uh, have run-ins essentially with direct or indirect cost barriers to academic success. One of our community partners, the Kent Rotary, provided over $10,000 this year to support our VET and SAFE funds. They are a wonderful partner and very good friend. This is after providing $43,000 in startup funding for our VET fund last year. So again, we, we are going very strong with our vets. But I would like to recognize George and his staff and also Christine. I'm, if you're here, please stand up and be recognized for all the hard work that you're doing. <laughs> yes, Megan, you get up there. <laughs> so thank you all. Without a doubt, we are an institution driven by innovation and forward thinking, which brings me to my next point. Most of you have heard from Dr. Brandes about our wildly important goal, or WIG as they would call it. This concept is based on our very best collective efforts focusing towards achieving our most important goal. And right now, our goal is to increase our fall enrollment by 5%. For us, it is truly successful in, uh, for us to be truly successful in achieving our goals with excellence, we must zero in, our enroll, in on our enrollment goal for two wildly important reasons. And the first is that we need to maintain our, the vitality of this college, not only for the students that we have, but for our future students. And two, we need to provide Washington residents with the opportunity to pursue an education and gain the necessary skills to be competitive in today's job market. This is a call to action. While this is a very, a very voluntary initiative, many of you have already started bringing forward work teams and developing your own wigs to pursue. Your efforts are really greatly appreciated Again, enrollment, I want to remind everybody, enrollment is the responsibility of everyone at, at Green River, not just the individuals in student affairs. So again, I, I would like to recognize the people in student affairs. Would you please stand up for all the good work that you are doing right now? And then Derek, thank you again. Jessica, people, <laughs> student affairs. Like other community colleges in the state of Washington and nationwide, our enrollment is trending downward. I wish I didn't have to say that, but it is. Since 2011, our enrollment has slowly been trending off while the economy rebounds. And every community college loves a recession because we get students coming into us. But then there's that reality, and we have to be joyous when they go back to work. 
And people are going back to work, which is great news. But also, that means that people are not coming to school in, in the numbers that they were a few years ago. This is especially true in the area of worker retraining. Green River is not the only school experiencing an, an enrollment downturn. Across the entire state community and technical college system, enrollment is decreasing an average of 4%. Some institutions are experiencing higher deficits and are at risk of losing FTE funding, and so again, that equates to dollars. We are at a turning point at Green River. We must not only meet our FTE targets, but exceed them to continue the momentum that we have experienced in the past and to continue to grow. As of today, our state-supported FTEs have declined 4.4% compared to last year. To put it in terms of uh, financial terms, each enrollment percent point equal, equates to approximately $140,000 in tuition funding that comes directly to the college. As we are nearing the end of this school year, the college is down about 2.7% from our, st our state target. This is nearly $400,000 of lost revenue. So you can see the urgency of getting in front of that ball, that enrollment ball. So again, we want to take that spiral that we're, we're seeing right now and turn it upward. We cannot afford to be complacent. We have to be vigilant. We have a challenge ahead of us, and it's going to take all of us working together to turn the tide. Declining enrollment is not our only fiscal challenge. We are also challenged by rising inflation, which we're not funded for, unfortunately, increased cost of state benefits, as well as efficiency cuts from the governor's office. And we did get a notice the other day that the efficiencies cuts might not be in the, the tune of $3 million for the system, but it's slightly less than that. So again, we're hoping that that stays steady. These fiscal challenges not only affect the college, but have an impact on each and every one of us to include our students. We continue to do more with less, and we have since the last, well, since about 2008. When we talk about our budgets, the majority of our revenues come from state appropriations, tuitions, and grants. And as you can see on the screen, grants, again, the shift has changed. Grants are about 45% of, of our uh, money that are coming in. 24% is state appropriations, 21% is tuition, and then 10% is an auxiliary support services. Nobody likes to talk about financial realities, but Green River has never been an institution that has turned away from a challenge, at least the four years that I've been here. During the recession, the college remained resilient and fared far better than most of our counterparts. The resiliency is due in large to good management practices, physical efficiencies that everybody participated in, and the dedicated work of each and every Green River employee every day. Your commitment to Green River is commendable, and I am grateful for your attitude of service in the face of budget constraints and having to do more with less. Continuing uh, with, with the, the, the program, here, um, I think one of the highlights, personal highlights for me this past year has been attending the ATD conference this past year. And uh, it, was, uh, it was wonderful to be in a conference setting with several thousand individuals all around the country and then to include our 18 community colleges in the state that are participating in achieving the dream, all focusing on student success, retention, and completion. And I think for me, the highlight was those student panel, uh, panels. We heard two panels, uh, and the students were remarkable, absolutely remarkable. The stories that they, that they told, nobody could make up, but yet they were successful and they were there thanking the community college for turning their lives around. Locally, we continue to pursue our work on achieving the dream, and we are focusing on those same goals that we heard about at the conference. Currently, the leadership team and data teams are working to develop strategic and measurable interventions for implementation. This past year was a planning year, so you might not have heard much about it, but this coming year we will be focusing on the implementation phase.
So again, I'd like to acknowledge Catherine Cantrell and Christine McMullen for offering to co-chair the Achieving the Dream initiative, but I'd also like to recognize the entire Achieving the Dream teams. So if you're on the Achieving the Dream, either the data team or leadership team, would you please stand up and be recognized? I'd also, uh, mentioning Catherine's name, this past week we had the opportunity of having the governor uh, near us. Uh, actually, it was, he was on East Hill at our iGrad program, and it was very exciting to share that program with the governor and the Kent School District. As a matter of fact, the Kent School District was recognized for the MAGMA award this last year, and that is the top award for K through 12 institutions, and they were recognized for the iGrad program. The governor came in, he visited with about 12 students, he heard their stories, he talked to staff, and he said he would like to make this a model for the state. So again, I am just so proud of Catherine and the partnership that we have with, with the Kent School District and with the Catherine staff. So if you're here, please stand up if you have anything to do with the iGrad program. Maybe they're screaming. I was very impressed with the governor coming out, and um, you know, actually, he shared a, a point. He was he was saying he had a connection with the the city of Kent and and the community because his mother-in-law was the lettuce queen in the Kent Valley, and believe it or not, I go back years. I told him there uh, his mother-in-law was a Lieber, and they were associated with the Lieber Farms, and that was the first job that I ever held was working the farms down at the Lieber Ranch and. You know, stringing beans and pulling potatoes. And so, again, the governor and I have a little something in common, I think. So. <laughs> but it was nice because we also had several representatives there. We had a, a new representative, Mia uh, Gregerson, I believe her last name is. Anyway, we're going to get her up on campus. She's relatively new to uh, the legislature. We also had Tina Orwell there, Marcy Maxwell. And Marcy and Tina were the two individuals that piloted that legislation for the recovery program. And I'm not sure if you knew, but when we started that program, there was over 2,000 students in the Kent School District alone that had dropped out. And I don't think that we can afford to be a disposable society. So actually that program is allowing students to, to uh, come in, finish either their GED at Green River, uh, get their high school diploma or their Washington State diploma. But many of those 12 students that were talking to the governor are students now at Green River. So again, very proud moment for, for us. I've talked about it before, and I will ask again, what does student success mean to you? your colleagues. What does it mean to our students and the community we serve? The most compelling vision of student success will take place next week as we celebrate with more than 2,000 graduates who will be earning a certificate or a, a degree this year. And that will be their ticket to a brighter future. I can't think of anything more rewarding to watch those students come across that stage and to see in their eyes and to see the smiles on their faces, just the glow and the, the sense of accomplishment. Students like Ned, Ed Nembendal. Nem, Ed, would you please stand? Oh, stay standing. Stay standing, Ed. Come on. When most people would like, would be slowing down and embracing retirement, Ed is wrapping up at 64. Ed will complete his AA degree and, uh, and complete his AA degree in pre-professional natural resources this quarter and will walk with his fellow graduates across the stage next week. He has been a Green River student for the last three years, taking a full load of classes while working a full-time job and as well as caring for his family, which includes a four-year-old daughter. Not only has he taken on the challenge of full-time classes, he also serves other students as a tutor in our math lab here both on the Auburn campus but also the Enumclaw campus. He also serves on student government and other numerous committees, all while maintaining a 3.5 GPA. Ed is passionate about his studies and hopes to use his life experience and education to teach someday, and I know you will do that, Ed. Ed is one, exa is one example of the thousands of lives and futures we transform every day at Green River. 
I've had the pleasure of getting to know Ed through the, his volunteer work on Student Senate and also on the Achieving the Dream initiative. He is a real inspiration and a shining example of why I am so honored to serve as president of Green River Community College. Thank you very much, Ed, for letting us be a part of your life. As our students walk across the stage at commencement, we as a college also have a path laid out before us. We must never forget our students are the reason we are here. Let me repeat myself. Our students are the reason we are all here. We need to always strive to increase student success by working together, building relationships, being open to change in order to grow, and meeting the needs of our community. We are reaching our goals and setting new ones. We must expand enrollment. We must improve student retention and completion. We must build our uh, financial position and fund innovative programs. And I can guarantee you that the emphasis on student achievement will increase. I have been working with the other presidents and other business officers and representatives from the system this last year on an allocation and accountability study, and they're looking at the funding formula. And we haven't finalized that funding formula yet. Uh, we are meeting again on the 16th to finalize that formula and bring it forward as a recommendation to the state board. But I can guarantee you that things will be changing. Right now, the funding formula, uh, we, they have no idea what has gone into the base. There's differences, huge differences between the FTEs, between one institution to the next. They put in one variable and it changes and they can't understand why it's changing. So again, we are looking at a new, understandable, easy to understand formula. And what goes into that formula, we have not finalized. But I do know right now, and I mentioned before, 0.8% of our funding comes from the Student Achievement Initiative. I bet, you know, the last model that I saw, it was up to 11%. So again, know that multiplier factor. And right now, Green River was one of three colleges that were not gaining from Student Achievement Initiative. So again, soon as I have a better understanding of what that final formula is, I will be sharing it with the college. But it's just a heads up that we really do have to focus on student achievement and, again, retention and completion. It's, it's, not, it's not something that I'm out there daydreaming about. It is going to become a reality. And, and again, um, I, I just hope that we don't lose too much at Green River over that. We must continue to maintain our status as a first-rate institution, focusing on innovation. We have to continue to focus on quality teaching and learning. We need to continue to focus on our key wraparound student services. And we also have to maintain a physical campus environment that is second to none. But we must also focus on the individual. Too often we forget about the individual. But we have to, again, start with quality hiring practices. And we have to value add to our employees by offering them professional development opportunities, supporting each other, and then acknowledging and celebrating our successes. Again, I do not think we uh, celebrate our successes as much as we should. I could sit, stand up here and talk about all of our successes that we've experienced this year, but I would be here all day and keep you all day also. So again, it was impossible to really summarize what we've done as an institution because we do great things every day. I want to thank you all for coming today, but I do want to thank a few people as, uh, before I conclude. I'd, I'd like to recognize and thank the members of the Board of Trustees for their continuous support courage and professional oversight of this college. They are not a rubber stamp board. They want to know what's happening. They ask questions. And again, they want to be involved. So I'm very proud of them. I would also like to thank my administrative team members for their outstanding leadership and vision, unsurpassed dedication, critical thinking skills, and positive outlook. At this point, I'd also like to welcome our new Vice President of Human Resources and Legal Affairs, Marshall Sampson. He's not here yet, but he will be starting on June 30th. But at the same time, I'd like to give special recognition to one of my administrators, Deb Casey, for her service above and beyond this past year. I uh, asked her to step up, and she did without question. 
with the idea that most probably it would last a few months. Well, it's been a year, and it's time for her to go back to student affairs, according to Deb. She needs to get back over there. So we're very excited for Marshall coming on board. You'll see most probably a, an email coming out shortly acknowledging his uh, coming and uh, outlining all of his uh, attributes that he will be bringing to Green River. Faculty, I would like to thank you for your incredible teaching skills, your professionalism, your dedication, your attention to technology in the classroom, your creativity, your high energy, and your caring and mentoring ways. Under your guidance, our students leave Green River prepared for the next step in their lives. So thank you very much, faculty. Staff, including classified and exempt employees, you are absolutely key to the operation of this institution. You're the oil. I thank you for all your dedication, caring concern for our students, attention to detail and follow through and making sure all that paperwork gets where it needs to go. Also, your quality communication, your technology and business skills, and your attention to maintaining the campus environment. Again, we have a beautiful <laughs> campus. And the list goes on and on. I know what it takes to run an institution, especially from a classified standpoint, because I started my career again in higher education as an executive assistant. I know how an institution works, and we all rely on the classified and exempt, so thank you. And lastly, I want to thank all of you. Green River cannot be successful without hard work, dedication, and support that each and every employee gives every day to this institution. You are the beating heart of Green River. So at this point, before I take any questions, I'd like all of you just to stand and clap for yourselves because you've done a great job this year. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or comments? I can come up from behind this now. Well, you're pretty quiet out there. Everybody hungry? <laughs> no questions? No comments? Well, again, I appreciate you being here, taking the time from your lunch break, and uh, again, coming and, and uh, just being present and giving, giving me an opportunity to thank each and every one of you because you are doing a terrific job. And we are a great institution, but it takes all of us. So thank you.